Good morning, Hudertal Mennonite Church. We welcome you all on a blustery Sunday morning. Welcome anybody's watching on everybody that's watching online to us today. So join me in a call to worship. It's on the back page or inside of the back page of your bulletin. Please join in with me on the bold print. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. No longer will they teach their neighbors to say one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least to the greatest. This new covenant is being offered to us. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Death must come before resurrection. A seed fallen to the soil and broken can become life for many. This new covenant is being offered to us to lay down our life and follow. The life-giving ways of God placed within our minds and written on our hearts, where we are forgiven and our sins remembered no more, where we are God's people and God is our love. Let us pray. It's good to be together, God, in this place with these people at this time, together listening for your voice. In this hour of worship, Tell us about your kingdom of kindness so that we can seek it. Show us your justice. We want to walk with you humbly, closely, and daily. Amen. As we go through the Lenten season, um, our visual up here beside me, a plant has been added to today's visual. It reminds us that in order to have Christ within us, we must die to ourselves. We must throw off all the external things that get in our way and look within. For a seed to produce anything, it has to die. Then and only then will it bear fruit. We are like that seed, patiently, lovingly. God waits for us to surrender. Let's, uh, if you're able, please stand and welcome each other. I'm going to introduce. You're good. Uh, If you will, you can uh, return to your seat and sit down. Our whole service has been thrown amuck by the 119th Psalm. The longest chapter in the Bible is our scripture reading today. And at some point during my growing up years, I learned the 105th verse by heart, which some of you may have done as well, right? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Interestingly enough, though, I don't remember thinking to myself as a kid, man, if I learned the 105th verse, that means there's 104 verses before that in that chapter. I I must not have been very good at deducing from these other pieces of information what was happening. So in the New Revised Standard Version, which is what I offered our readers today, the psalm comes in at a little over 2,500 words, longer than most of my sermons. So we have 22 readers today, each reading eight verses apiece, 
And at the end of each reading, so at the end of each set of eight verses, we all will respond to them with words that I developed from Jeremiah 31. A little bit of information about Psalm 119, though, is that it's an acrostic poem. And so each of its sections, so each reader today, represents a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. There are 22 letters, and so our first reader is the letter Aleph, our second reader is the letter Beit, and then Gimel and Dalit and Hey. and I know you don't know those letters, that's okay. But each one is a different letter in the Hebrew alphabet, and each verse, if you were to read it in biblical Hebrew, each verse of the section begins with that letter as well. So the author was very intentional about making sure that the structure was kept in the writing of the psalm. So as you listen today and you hear the multiplicity of ways that the psalmist talks about God's law or God's word, maybe we should also think about God's desire for us to live and walk in right relationship with each other, with ourselves, with God, and with creation. Because that is what the psalmist is writing about. And so as our first reader begins, make sure to open your bulletin to the litany of response, which is on the same page as the call to worship, so that you are ready to read it when each reader finishes their section. Uh, Readers that are up here right now, you're welcome to use that mic or this mic over here or the pulpit. You are welcome to choose. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. How can young people keep their ways pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart, so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees, so much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. Deal bountifully with your servant so that I may live and observe your word. Open my eyes so that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. I live as an alien in the land. Do not hide your commandments from me. My soul is consumed with longing for your ordinances at all times. You rebuke the insolent, accursed ones who wander from your commandments. Take away from me their scorn and contempt, for I have kept your decrees. Even though princes sit plotting against me, your servant will meditate on your statutes. Your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. My soul clings to the dust. Revive me according to your word. When I told of my ways, you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your ordinances before me. I cling to your degree, O Lord. Let me not 
be put to shame. I run the way of your commandments, for you enlarge my understanding. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statues, and I will observe it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Turn your heart, turn my heart to your degrees and not a selfish gain. Turn my eyes from looking at vanities. Be gracious to me according to your word. Confirm to your servant your promise, which is for those who fear you. Turn away the disgrace that I dread from your ordinances are good. See, I have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, be gracious to me. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I shall have an answer for those who taunt me, for I trust in your word. Do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your ordinances. I will keep your law continually forever and ever. I shall walk at liberty, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your decrees before kings and shall not be put to shame. I find my delight in your commandments because I love them. I revere your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Remember your word to your servant, in which you have made me hope. Write your, your word and your, your way, way on our, our hearts, hearts, Lord God, God that, that we would all know you. This is my comfort in my distress, and your promise gives me life. The arrogant utterly deride me but I do not turn away from your law. When I think of your ordinances of old, I take comfort, O Lord. Hot indignation seizes me because of the wicked, those who forsake your law. Your statutes have my songs whenever I make my home. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and keep your law. This blessing has fallen to me, and for I have kept your precepts. Write, Write your, your word and your way, way on our hearts, hearts, Lord God, that, that we would all know you. Thank you. Good morning. Our first hymn this morning is going to be number 158, I Know God Loves Me, number 158. You may stand. <laughs> Just 
You can now turn to 161, I Sought the Lord. 161. We come to our sharing time. Any praises, prayers, concerns? Someone will bring a microphone. Please share. Hi, it's Les. Uh, we're pleased with all the compliments we got on our sausage this year. We tried to make it better than ever. But our sales are way down, and so there will be an opportunity for self-serve, as in the past. That'll be from 1 to 6 p.m. Monday through Saturday. I bring a check, as that's the only method of payment that works for us. There's a drop box there. Larry Cheddar here. I have a praise uh, to share with you. I've completed my 44 radiation treatments. Uh, not too many side effects, but there are a few. I thank God and I thank this congregation for all the prayers that uh, you gave for me. You told me you were praying for me. People offered to drive us. Uh, fortunately, the weather was okay and I was okay, so Edie and I uh, did all the trips together. Um, <clears throat> When you're laying on the machine, rotating around you, you have a little bit of time to think. And it's a physical journey that you go through with the cancer. It's also a spiritual journey that I, I noticed I was having, just thinking there. And uh, you, you begin to think how, God, how important God is and, and uh, how important God is in your life. I uh, thank you for your prayers and everything that you do for me, and, and keep it up for Amy. <laughs> Good morning, this is Steve Mendel. I'm gl glad to have my brother-in-law James and my s sister Charmaine and their daughter Jillian here with us worshiping. Thank you. Good morning, Jolene Thomas here. Um, just a reminder that there is a group of folks that will be joining me tomorrow evening here at the church. We will uh, start working on getting the sanctuary ready for pre-Easter services the following week. There will be another group coming in on Tuesday evening to continue 
the cleaning. Um, as an added note, towards the end of this next week, I am going to be taking apart the lower foyer, which is the main entry, um, because that floor is going to get wet washed and waxed. I will have signs posted on the door when I begin that process, but just would suggest if any of you need to come into the church towards the end of the week, uh, text me or give me a call and I'll let you know if it's workable to come in because I would like to give that wax a good opportunity to dry. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Let's, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we humbly come before you this morning. We thank you for another day, another week, where we can gather as a church family to worship. We thank you for the freedom we have to be able to worship freely as we please in a free country. Help us never take this freedom for granted. We thank you for another successful Schmeckfest weekend. We acknowledge all the long hours and the dedicated volunteers and all their hard work. Give comfort, strength, and rest to these people. We pray for Larry Cheddar. We, we praise you for the 44 treatments and the journey and the battle that he went through to ring that bell. We thank you for doctors and medical treatments. And we thank you that, it's, that he made it through this and even enjoyed a spiritual journey beside the emotional and the physical journey. We also pray for Amy. Give her strength as she continues on with her treatments. We ask you to be with us during this church cleaning. Give Jolene strength and, and leadership to delegate the authority and that we chip in and, and Bless God by keeping our house clean and beautiful. We lift up in prayer those who are aging and needing care. Many of our church family are getting older, needing assistance. We pray especially for Marcella Glanzer, who has pneumonia and is weak and tired. We ask for your comfort on her and a speedy recovery. And then we give you praise for both LaVon Cheddar and Mildred Hofer, where they are able to attend Schmeckfest with their families this weekend. We pray for our congregational pastor evaluation team as they now compile all the completed surveys. Give them strength and energy and diligence as they review evaluations, discuss together, and begin sharing the information. We thank you for the organized and orderly format our congregation has to relate with and encourage our pastor. Lord, we pray for peace in our war-torn countries. Our heart aches for the innocent victims of Palestine and the Ukraine. We ask you bring a sense to the leaders of Israel and Russia to stop the bombing and killing of innocent people. Somehow, in your divine way, give strength and comfort to all those innocent people and children who are caught in the middle of a war, homeless and starving, and nowhere to go. We ask for your mercy on them. Lord, we thank you for this time of the year where we can observe Lenten season. Help us never forget or take for granted <clears throat> your great sacrifice of dying on the cross for our sins. We ask that you bless our Holy Week services that Hooter Tall is hosting this year. Be with our speaker, Michelle Hirschberger, as she travels to us and spends Holy Week with us. Let her messages be an inspiration to us. We acknowledge all the hard work and time of those who have been planning this Holy Week services, as well as our Maudie Thursday communion service. 
This time of the year, we pray for our farmers as we see spring approaching, making plans, getting equipment ready, securing crop inputs, long hours of preparation. Give them strength and encouragement as they approach this new season. We do ask for rain or moisture as the season looks to be dry again. Please give us faith. We pray for our pastor and his young family. Keep them safe, give them the energy they need to keep going. We thank you for the opportunity that Hoodertal has been given to help Pastor Randall achieve his goal in ministry and in finishing seminary classes. Lord, we pray these things in your holy name. Amen. Next set of scripture, yes, you may come forward. There, did I flip it wrong? That's what I did. I'm sorry. So, this next set of seven scripture readers begins with the Hebrew letter Chet, and we will respond in the same way when each one finishes their particular section. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I implore your flavor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think of your ways, I turn my feet to your decrees. I hurry and do not delay and to, uh, to keep your commandments. Though the cords of the wicked ensnare me, I do not forget your laws. At midnight, I rise to praise you because of your righteous ordinances. I am a companion of all who fear you of those who keep your precepts. The Lord, uh, the earth is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. May I write your word in our hearts, O God, that we may all know you. You have dealt well with your servant. O Lord, according to your word, teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe in your commandments. Before I was humbled, I went astray, but now I keep your word. You are good and do good. And do good. Teach me your statues. The arrogant smear me with lies, but with my whole heart I keep your precepts. Their hearts are thick like fat, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I was humbled, so that I might learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Write, Write your word in your way on our heart, Lord God, that we would all know you. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you shall see me and rejoice because I have hoped in your word. I know, O oh Lord, that your judgments are right and that in faithfulness you have humbled me. Let your steadfast love Become my comfort, according to your promise to your servant. Let your mercy come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the arrogant be put to shame, for they have subverted, subverted me with guile. As for me, I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me so that they may know your decrees. May my heart be blameless in your statutes so that I may not be put to shame. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, 
that we would all know you. My soul languishes for your salvation. I hope in your word. My eyes fail with watching for your promise. I ask, when will you comfort me? For I have become like a wineskin in the smoke. Yet I have not forgotten your statutes. How long must your servant endure? When will you judge those who persecute me? The arrogant have dug pitfalls for me. They flout your law. All your commandments are enduring. I am persecuted without cause. Help me. They have almost made an end of me on earth, but have not forsaken your precepts. In your steadfast love, spare my life, so that I may keep the degrees of your mouth. Your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we will all know you. The Lord exists forever. Your word is firmly fixed in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. By your appointment they stand today, for all things are your servants. If your law had not been my delight, I would have perished in my misery. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have given me life. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked lie in waste to destroy me, but I consider your decrees. I have seen a limit to all perfection, but your commandment is exceedingly broad. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies, for it is always with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your decrees are my meditation. I understand more than the aged, for I keep your precepts. I hold my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn away from your audiences, for you have taught me. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a, lamp and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. Ordinances. I hold my, I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare on, a snare for me, but I do not stray from your precepts. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your stat statues forever to the end. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we all know you. Children's story. Please come ahead. Alrighty, good morning everybody. How are you guys this morning? 
What did you notice about this morning? There was some snowflakes, and it was windy and chilly. I don't know about the rest of you, but I kind of got spoiled with all that nice weather we had, being able to go out without a coat on. This morning, I went to the closet, and I got my winter coat back out. I didn't like that very much, but anyway. During the winter time, when it's cold and there's snow on the ground, this year's been kind of an exception, one thing that I look forward to around Christmas time, or shortly thereafter, is I look forward to going to my mailbox and finding these. You know what these are? Garden catalogs, seed catalogs, and I managed to get one or two in the mail. But what this means to me is that as soon as this catalog comes in my mailbox, I can start planting my garden the very next day, right? <laughs> no, but I'd like to. To me, this is a good sign that spring is coming, so. I look forward to all my garden catalogs that come in the mail. But by going through a garden catalog, you can pick out all sorts of seeds for all sorts of things. Even Brussels sprouts. Ew. Ew. All right. Well, we're going to play a little game this morning. Okay, I brought some things with me, and we're going to have a little fun, and we're going to play a game. Okay? All right. Okay, you guys know what this is, right? Okay, so the game is this. Okay, inside this pine cone is a seed. What is, this? What is it a seed for? What do you think it's a seed, the seed inside here is for? Growing. Growing. But what kind of a plant will this grow? A pine tree. A pine tree. You're right. But what variety of pine tree? <laughs> I'm picking on you. This is for a Colorado blue spruce. Okay? So you're right. It's for a tree. Okay? What? I brought some others. Oh, I forgot about this one. Okay, so what's in this little bag? Dirt. dirt. You're right, it's dirt. Okay, in my little bag here, there's about a teaspoon of dirt. Okay, and Google kind of have led me to this one. This I discovered on Google. Okay, this is not just any kind of dirt. This is super dirt. Okay, the reason why I call it super dirt is because in this teaspoon of dirt, when it is well fertilized and cared for, I have to be honest, this come out of flower pot in my living room, but when it's well cared for, there are enough microorganisms in a teaspoon of dirt more than the number of people in the world. Okay? So that's why I call it super dirt. Okay? It's just dirt, huh? Well, no, there's more to it than that. But when you think about all the microorganisms that are in this dirt, and this is just a teaspoon. Think of how many microorganisms there are out in that whole entire field on the south side of the church. Okay, more than we would ever be able to count. Okay, so game time again. All right, so I brought some cards, and I'm going to have you look at it. Okay. Can you tell me what kind of a plant this grows? 
Okay. Take a guess. Close. Very close. Same family. Okay. This is seed for squash. Okay. These are squash seeds. Now, part of that family is zucchini. All right. So all you'd have to do is go out in the garden and put these two seeds. This is uh, acorn squash. But you would put two zucchini seeds in the ground and you'd have enough zucchini for everybody in church and the whole town of Freeman and still be trying to get rid of some. Okay. In other words, zucchini grows very well here. All right. Okay. What's this one? Okay, who wants to take a guess? Beans? You are right. This is for green beans. How many of you like green beans? Oh, well, that's good. Because you need to eat your vegetables. Okay. So, take a look at this one. Okay. What's this one a seed for? Peas. You're right. This is peas. It kind of looks like a dried up version of a pea, doesn't it? So, that one's peas. Okay, so what's this a seed for? This is a different looking kind of seed. That's right. I threw you a little bit of a curveball. This is for a flower. This is a marigold. Okay. They're kind of long, straw-looking seeds. But a seed, nonetheless. All right. So, what's this one for? Okay, anybody know? Squash? No, we did the squash already. Okay, the little brown dot, there's three seeds there. Spinach. How many of you like spinach? Yeah, that one's spinach. Okay, and as you notice, we're getting progressively smaller here as we go. Okay. Okay, there's three seeds on this one. And believe it or not, these three seeds would be enough to start a plant. What? Nope. Tomato. Tomato. These are tomatoes. Okay, so think about how big a tomato plant can get. Okay, some of them can get really big. And all the tomatoes that you can pick off of one plant that comes from just three tiny little seeds. Okay. And the last one. <laughs> okay. You are corrected as a carrot. Okay. Now, I, when I did this, I counted. There's 10 seeds just in that little spot for a carrot. Okay, there's 10, no, 10 carrots. It, the, 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 each seed has the capability of growing one plant. Okay, okay, now, it is amazing what God is capable of doing with just 10 little seeds and what we can get from those seeds. Did you ever think that something this tiny could grow a carrot? It's possible. And it, like I said, it's amazing at what God will do. But in order for that to happen, we have to start with this, which for most intensive purposes 
is dead. But it is not until we put the seeds in this super dirt, take care of them, fertilize them, water them, weed them, that we can get the carrots or all the other vegetables. And it's kind of like what it was said in our call to worship this morning um, in what Lyndon was telling us today. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it will remain a seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And that's how it is with us. When we come in relationship with the Lord, it plants a seed in our minds and in our hearts. And that relationship grows and continues to grow, hopefully, until we become an ardent follower of Jesus. But when we do that, we cannot expect things to stay the same, okay? We may look the same on the outside and things will look, on, look exactly the same on the outside. But inside, we become a different person, okay? And we need to nurture that. We nurture that by reading the scriptures, coming to church, praying, being with other people that are believers, and as that grows, you can share it with others, okay? So, one more thing here, okay? This is just a little piece of a branch from my rose bush. But if you look at that branch, what are you going to see on there? Spikes? Well, those spikes have a reason. 16 buds. Okay? To keep it safe. With the warmer weather we've been having and the closer we get to spring, we're beginning to see new life. And this is, like I said, is a little branch from my rose bush and it's starting to put out buds. And that's the way it is with us. When we join in that relationship with Christ, it starts out small, but eventually it opens up and all sorts of wonderful things can happen. Okay? Let's take a moment for a word of prayer. Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your creation and the potential that it brings. We thank you for the seeds that you provide for us and all that can come from them that is good with care and nurturing. We thank you too, Lord, for the gift and welcome, we welcome you inside our hearts and minds so that we may blossom and grow and build new life within ourselves through the gift of your son who went to the cross to die for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you, Lord, for that sacrifice that was made on our behalf out of your great love for each of us. In your name we pray, amen. You may head back. We come to the time of our prayer confession. That's also found in the inside of the back page of your bulletin. Please join me again in the bold. O oh God, we gather before you seeking your mercy. Hear us, we pray. We confess that we sin against you. O oh God, wash us, make us clean, create us in a new spirit. Stay close to us, restore us to your truth. 
so that we can cry out with joy, cleansed in your abundant mercy. So if the next group of readers could come forward. Um, it's hard to believe, but we've made it through a hundred and some verses of Psalm 119. And I think you're getting the hang of it now. And so at the end of each section again, I couldn't tell you exactly where we are in the alphabet again. I'd have to think about that. That'll be okay. We could talk about it another time. With that being said, though, I invite you to respond when each one finishes. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Go away from me, you evildoers. May I keep the commandments of my God. Un un uphold my Uphold me according to your promise that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of, let not me be ashamed in my hope. Hold me up that I may be safe, and regard, and have regard for your statutes continuously. You spurn all who stay astray from your statutes, for they are cunning is in vain. All the wicked of the earth I count as draws, therefore I love your decrees. My flesh trembles for fear for, of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. Write your word on your way on our hearts, O Lord, and we may all know you. I have done what, oh my, I have done what is just and right. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Guarantee your servants' well-being. Do not let the godless oppress me. My eyes fail from watching for your salvation and for, for the fulfillment of your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your steadfast love and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding so that I may know your decrees. It is time for the Lord to act, for your law has been broken. Truly, I love your commandments more than gold, more than fine gold. Truly, I direct my steps by all your precepts. I hate your false way. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we may all know you. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. The unfolding of your words gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. With open mouth I pant, because I long for your commandments. Turn to me and be gracious to me, as is your custom toward those who love your name. Keep my steps steady according to your promise, and never let iniquity have dominion over me. Redeem me from human oppression, that I may keep your precepts. Make your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your statue. My eyes shed streams of tears, because your law is not kept. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. You are righteous, O Lord, and your judgments are right. You have appointed your decrees in righteousness and all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because, of my, because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried, and your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your law is the truth. Trouble and anguish have come upon me, but your commandments are my delight. Your decrees are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. Write your word and your way on our, on our hearts, hearts, Lord, Lord God, God, that, that we, we would all know you. 
With my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Lord, I will keep your statutes. I cry to you, save me that I may observe your decrees. I rise up before dawn and cry for help. I put my hope in your words. My eyes are awake before each watch of the night that I may meditate on your promises. In your steadfast love, hear my voice. O Lord, in your justice, preserve my life. Those who persecute me with evil purposes draw near. They are far from your law. Yet you hear, yet you are near, O Lord, for all your commandments are true. Long ago, I learned from your decrees that you have established them forever. Write your words and your way on our heart, Lord God, that we would all know you. Look on my misery and rescue me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, and for they do not see your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your justice. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, yet I do not swerve from your decrees. I look at the faithfulness with disgust, faithless with disgust, because they do not keep your commandments. Consider how I love your precepts. Preserve my life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and everyone in your righteousness Righteous ordinances endure forever. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. Princes persecute me without cause, but my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous ordinances. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and I fulfill your commandments. My soul keeps your decrees. I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and decrees, for all my ways are before you. Write your word and your way on our hearts, Lord God, that we would all know you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips will pour forth praise because you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your promise for all your commandments are right. Let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live that I may praise you, and let your ordinances help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. Write your word and your way on your hearts, Lord God that we would all know you. Please join me in prayer. Faithful God, Deal bountifully with us, your servants, so that we may live and observe your word. Open our eyes so that we may behold the wondrous things out of your law. Amen. Someone jokingly walked up to me before the service and said, Boy, how are you going to fit your sermon in? Did you intend to do that so you wouldn't have to preach very long? 
Well, we're certainly going to find out. It's about 13 till. If I go another 20 minutes, we should be out by 10 after 11. I feel like timing's going well. Our final scripture reading today, and I wanted to make sure to read it for you, is Jeremiah chapter 31. Of course, this is one of the hopeful parts of Jeremiah. Jeremiah is full of less hopeful things. But Jeremiah 31 is about the new covenant. And so you'll hear some familiar words as I read it. Starting in verse 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The sacred scriptures, we've gotten our fill today, maybe to overflowing. And during this Lenten season, we are reminded that as is our custom, we are walking both with Jesus in the wilderness, trying to create space in our lives for the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, hence the reason we might commit to a particular discipline, maybe something we don't do or something we do do in order to create space. But we also know that we're journeying with Jesus. If you noticed, if you were listening closely to Psalm 119, there's a common refrain of walking or journeying with God or with God's law in this relationship. And so we're also on a confusing, tense, even struggling journey with Jesus to the cross and the tomb. Our Lenten theme is Christ among us, and today as we think about the intersection of Psalm 119 and Jeremiah 31, we think about Jesus the Christ as the new covenant, the new promise, something that we'll hear more when we enter the week of Christ's passion, something we'll hear very distinctly in our Maundy Thursday service. And just as each section of Psalm 119 has eight verses, the author of the psalm uses eight different words, all interspersed throughout the psalm that mean law or decree or statute, but the most common of them is the Torah. That's a really important thing to remember because we often think that all of the words of the Hebrew scriptures are on a level playing field, and they're not. Within Judaism, the most important part of the scriptures is the Torah, the first five books. So Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And we get very used to hearing ideas like statutes and laws and um, decrees and um, trying to think of all the other legalese words we like to use in America. And we think that that's the same thing, that if we just keep a bunch of rules, or if we just make sure we have enough rules to shape our lives and keep us from temptation, that that's what God desires. But I think that fails to read the Torah in the fullness of what it is, right? Because in the books of Genesis through Deuteronomy, we are reading a story, right? A journey of relationship where God's people are called, yes, out of slavery, but they're called on a 40-year journey through the wilderness, and they're called through the wilderness to the promised land where they're not so sure they really want to take it. And so God takes them back into the wilderness for a little while and brings them back to the promised land. Boy, does that kind of story sound familiar to our lives. 
And so today, when you think of Psalm 119 as a celebration of God's law, think of it as a celebration of a journey of relationship, like a friendship or a marriage, or really any other type of relationship we think about. Right? Each of us is on a journey alongside those around us, and those journeys have ebbs and flows and ups and downs to them. And we hear that too in a Psalm 119. And so this is where Jesus, the fullness of God's word in human flesh, comes into the story. Jesus exemplifies for us, to us, with us, the relationship or the promise or the covenant that lies at the heart of God's steadfast love. What we hear in Psalm 119 then is not someone trying to tell us how much better our lives would be if we only followed more rules, but instead someone witnessing, right? The, the author of the chapter witnessing, telling their story in 176 verses as an invitation to all of us to know God's heart and God's intention and God's purpose and God's love more deeply and fully. Please join me in prayer. Loving God, we have longed for your precepts. In your righteousness, be gracious to us. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Let your salvation come to us according to your promise. Amen. We come to a time of our offering. As yeshers get prepared, let's bow our head for a prayer. Lord, we come before you today to present our tithes and offerings to you in faith. We believe your word and we honor it by putting our faith in action through giving. We thank you for your blessings and we believe that we will have what you promised. Amen. While the offering is collected, Amy will play through number 170, Wonderful Grace of Jesus. Um, I will direct you to stand, and then we will sing it once the offering has been collected. Number 170. You may stand.
You can now turn to number 429, Glory to God, whose goodness shines on me. Number 429. Go from here assured of the new covenant written on your hearts. God is our God. We are God's people, grafted into an ancient story and promise. Praise the Lord, the God of covenant promise and faithfulness. Go in peace. Here we made it.